Purunju, what's your, you know, what's your next next big bet? Uh, you know, everyone wants to know what is Purunju next, you know, betting big on. You're talking about stock. Yes. Yeah. See, recently, if you remember, last month uh, I was on uh, CNBC and the, in the, you know, I was talking about the Tata Group consumer companies. Yes. And uh, they are they already started doing well. If you see Tata, Tata Coffee, Global and Tata, Tata, Tata Global, and uh, even Tata Chemical is becoming an FMCG company. Mm -hmm. They will be disinvesting the fertilizer. Yes. That theme is working. I feel uh, looking at the fundamentals, you know, just even number crunching or if you do the you know, arithmetic, uh, there seems to be a lot of space for that. Okay. See, all of a sudden I am holding Tata Global, Tata Tea, I mean Tata Coffee, Coffee. so uh, not Tata Chemicals. But you uh, so also my to... disclaimer. Okay. Uh, I feel that this is a stock. There is no hurry for investors to uh, get into that. They have moved a bit in the recent past. Yes. But uh, everybody has written it off, being frustrated with these mm -hmm. stocks, if you remember. Yes. I Tata Chemicals was an index stock at a yeah, point. Yeah. You know, even Tata Global Beverages was uh, at one point an index so stock. The logic I was giving for the for that argument was that uh, there is a change in the attitude of the Tata management. Mm. You know, they have been earlier focusing on acquiring businesses abroad mm. and uh, you, maybe in India or expanding and growing big. Mm. So that has affected the bottom line and the shareholder wealth creation. Mm. Now, I think uh, Cyrus Mystery has, uh, is aware about it well and he has been working on that and there is a pressure on every CEOs mm. of these companies to, to perform, mm. to create profit mm. and to create shareholder wealth. Mm. I think uh, they have been off late, maybe for the first time, uh, they started talking about creating shareholder wealth. Mm. Uh, I think this can be a theme for next one year. Okay. Which are your favorite countries where you go to more often than not? Uh, I try to go to a new place every time. Okay. Now I was just looking. I have uh, traveled some 33, 34 countries, uh, mm. but some of them was very brief kind of thing. But I loved most is the latest one I went. It was a solo trip to be frank. I okay. uh, went to Scotland. I spent some 11 days. Some two months back I went to uh, with my family and my kid. Uh, we went to uh, UK. I mean the England. We had been to London and uh, mm. you know moved around. Uh, but Scotland is something I really loved. Mm. I think that real, real Scottish feel. Mm. They are keeping that uh, traditions, unlike London kind of places, you know. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's, it's the beauty of the country. Mm. Everywhere they call it Glen, you know, mm. the valleys mm. and the cows, the mm. sheep. Mm. And another thing I noticed in uh, Scotland, everywhere you can see, you know, dozens of uh, uh, the windmills, mm. huge. There may be thousands of them I could see mm. while driving around. Mm. An amazing country. I never knew it was so beautiful. Mm. Uh, so Inverness was that uh, location I enjoyed most. Okay. Uh, let's talk a bit more about your family, Purinju. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I've, I've heard you have your three kids. Uh, yeah, I have three children. Okay. My daughter, she is 25. Mm. My son is 23. Mm. And uh, my youngest one is now nine year old. Okay. Yeah. That uh, that's uh, very interesting. Again, I'm enjoying. You know, okay. it's always nice to have small kids. Mm. But uh, mm -hmm. you, you, uh, here right now, you only the youngest uh, son is with you. But yeah. The, you know, the elder son and elder daughter, uh, the daughter both are uh, abroad, I believe. And my, my elder son is in uh, he's in New York. Okay. Uh, he was studying there and he worked with the Maryland for one year and now he's uh, back in uh, New York. He's Try, trying some startups, I believe. Okay. <laughs> and my daughter is uh, married and she's settled in Cochin. She's settled in Cochin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I got that wrong. Uh, and tell us a bit about your wife. What kind of influence has she had on you? Yeah, Litty. She, she has been very supportive to my profession, mm. I would say. She's mm. also working uh, with equity intelligence mm. in the operations. Mm. And, you know, uh, so that's something interesting. Both of us are in the same, uh, mm. same company, same office, mm. same field. Mm. Uh, so, uh, she has been very supportive, uh, basically, I would say, for whatever I have been doing. I have been traveling also. I sometimes uh, just go out of, you know, the office for a week. I take yeah. break. Yeah. I love traveling. Yeah. Uh, uh, of late, I am traveling, uh, you know, maybe two, three months. Uh, at least once in two, three months. Mm. Okay. She's a great host as well, I must tell you, Purinjo, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, uh, me and my team were here and uh, she has taken real good care of us. Uh, any uh, any other anecdote uh, in terms of any stock where you kept averaging because your conviction was strong, uh, but the stock kept falling and uh, at some point it reversed and uh, gave you handsome returns? Yeah, this is uh, Shreya's Shipping and Logistics. These okay. are the ones long back we have discussed in uh, our uh, 
show. CNBC show. Yes. And uh, this stock was, you know, I started buying at 35 rupees mm -hmm. in 2012. Okay. 12, 13, I was accumulating. I loved the company mm -hmm. because, uh, but when I bought and the stock was falling slowly, slowly, to, it mm -hmm. came down to 17 rupees by mm -hmm. March 2014, I remember, mm -hmm. for the year ending. Mm -hmm. And you know, from 35 to 17. Mm -hmm. So, and the, you know, when you hear Shaya shipping and logis, people were not impressed. Mm -hmm. So, many clients were asking, Puranji, why do you buy this kind of a shipping company? And all, you know, mm -hmm. stock has go, fallen 30, 40%, 50%. Mm -hmm. So, but my conviction was so good. I went on buying aggressively at 17, 18, 20, 22, up to 30 rupees. Mm. Because it was a 65% market share mm. in India's coastal shipping, containerized, uh, containerized uh, coastal shipping. And that is an industry with a huge potential. Mm. It's in the infancy. So many of these stocks you have bought and you have exited. So, uh, you don't believe in the absolute long-term investments, I mean that you should stay invested and keep buying more of these businesses. You believe that exit is also important? Uh, I think uh, the kind of volatility, Indian kind, uh, kind of an economy mm. and the markets going through, mm. uh, taking advantage of the medium term opportunities mm. can make you uh, a better performer. Mm. Uh, at the same time, uh, buying and holding tight, you know, mm. it has got its own advantage. Mm. I can't say it's bad. Yes. See, there are some companies are meant for that. Mm. Uh, so, and some people, they bought a stock like Page Industry. Somebody bought it at very low price, 200, mm. 300 rupees. It went to 10,000, 15,000, 16, 17,000. It may come down a bit, one may not really sell it. They may not feel like selling it. Mm. That's one strategy. Yes. But being a portfolio manager, I always want the best possible CAGR for my investors. Yes. So, uh, I may not have any, that kind of uh, love to the stock. Mm. So, uh, I don't marry the stock as people okay. say.